he is a Colombian born multiple disciplinarian artist who has exhibited all over the US, Latin America. Give a shout out to Miles Paz. Tonight he will be our digital visual artist. As you see on the screen, his beautiful work that he's doing live. Yes, it's live. All right, next up, we have the international exhibiting artist and creator of The Grove, a stunning installation featured here at The Futures. Give it up for Devin Shimamoya. Yes, make some noise. All right, finally, last but definitely not least, we have Grammy nominated and Indigenous Music Award winning artist, Maimuna Youssef, also known as Mumu Fresh. Make some noise. And let's not forget, we have the hostess with the mostest, the man with the plan. This will be your MC tonight. You know, I'm only the vibe creator. He will lead the conversation. We have Adriel, I mean, Adriel Louise. He's a community organizer, artist, and curator here at the Smithsonian Asian Pacific American Center. Give a shout out for Adriel. All right. Hello, hello. All right, so we've introduced our panelists. We're about to get this cipher started, but first we have some ground rules. We have some rules. All right, there are three rounds in the cipher. Each round will include a list of questions that everyone on stage will have a chance to respond to using their medium of choice. We have Mumu Fresh. She's a beautiful, talented singer. We have Devin, you've seen his piece, so he'll just be speaking tonight. And then we also have Mas Paz again, your digital artist. All right, so this is a rapid fire conversation or performance art exchange and discussion where you, when you hear this sound, oh, are y'all ready? That sound, that means it's the end of the round. Second, much like a hip hop cypher, when you hear something you like, Make sure you snap your fingers. Come on. All right. I have gave the rules. Snap your fingers. Let's practice. All right. And after the round is over, we need all the energy that you can bring to our performers for this next round. All right. All right. Finally, if you're sharing a highlight from tonight's cypher, we ask that you use the hashtag, hashtag the futures with an S. And tag us at Smithsonian AIB. All right, Adriel. I think. We are ready to get started. I don't know if we're ready. We I need, actually we need don't know if we're ready. Are we ready we to get some started? Noise. <laughs> don't make me send you back to Zoom. <laughs> we're here in person. This is my first in-person event all pandemic long. It's so beautiful to see the top half of your faces. I need to hear a non-museum noise. Make some noise, please. All right, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm so excited to be here at the Cypher, but let's begin this properly. It is my deep honor. I am endlessly thankful to acknowledge the Piscataway Nation as the original stewards of this area that we sometimes call Washington, D.C. So we're here celebrating the 175th anniversary of the Smithsonian. History tells us that the Piscataway people have been here for upwards of 10,000 years. Mathematicians, how many times does 175 years fit in 10,000 years? 57 times. I'm not math, I looked it up, I looked it up. 57 times, so when I think about this past year, this past year and a half, this pandemic period and how long it's felt, just sit with how long this past year has felt. And then think about 175 years and think about these black and white images of the Smithsonian back before any of us were alive. Think about this building opening as the US National Museum in 1881. 175 years is a long time. It would take 57 of those to even begin to touch the deep history of the Piscataway people in this place and them calling this home and as they continue to call this home well into the future. So as we talk about the future today, I want to honor with all my might, all of our spirit, the Piscataway people on the deep history. Please give it up for deep history. All right, all right. Um, and, and I would be remiss if I did not also begin this night uh, 
you know, shouting out some people who very recently became some ancestors. And so first and foremost, uh, to Chief Billy Tayak, who was not only, is not only an incredibly important leader for Piscataway Nation, but also for Washington, D.C. and the DMV area, is Chief Billy Tayak, who dedicated his life to ensuring that the narrative of this land includes Piscataway people and the history and the present and the future of Piscataway people. Everybody, please give it up to our ancestor, Chief Billy Tayak. I want to shout out the, the artist, the, the visioneer, the designer, Virgil Abloh, as, as somebody, myself, who works in an institution, constantly trying to see how we can change things from within, never losing sight of my community, Virgil Abloh has always been a deep inspiration of straddling those two worlds and bringing those two worlds together. And so tonight, I also want to dedicate that to Virgil. Please give it up for Virgil Abloh. And, and of course, to Bell Hooks. I want to read, I want to re read a quote that I hope that we can keep close um, in our minds and our hearts today um, from Bell Hooks. To live fixated on the future is to engage in psychological denial. It is a form of psychic violence that prepares us to accept the violence needed to ensure the maintenance of imperialist, future-oriented society. That's a deep quote for a future cipher, for an exhibition about futures. So what does that mean, right? When we think about Washington, D.C., this place that I've called home, when we think about how D.C. has developed over the millennia, over the centuries, with this idea of the future, you know, I, I think about innovation, I think about all the incredible things that have happened, but I also think about the fact that it was future-oriented thinking that also led to histories of enslavement, histories of displacement, of gentrification, right? And, and, and these are costs that were paid in order for us to all be here today. These are sacrifices that were made, and, and, we, and we don't take that for granted. We're, we're in a building that was once the U.S. National Museum that held objects taken from the Wilkes Expedition in the mid-1800s from the Pacific Islands, from the western coast of the Americas. There were 80 people in Fiji who were killed for these objects. And so when we're talking about futures at the Smithsonian, let's not take that for granted. So let's talk about the future in a way that, that, that speaks and promotes liberation and freedom and geniusness of the collective us. Are you all okay with that? Yeah. All right. Well, with that said, are you interested in meeting the other people who are joining me in this cipher? All right, please give it up one more time for Maz Paz, Devin Shimoyama, I'm so sorry, Devin, and Mumu Fresh. Devin Shimoyama, please give it up for Devin. All right, y'all, so I am very, very curious. This first question I would like to, like to ask is, um, you know, all of us learned something over this pandemic. We learned many things, right? How many of you learned how to bake bread during the pandemic? <laughs> Never bought a loaf of bread again, right? I'm sure. Uh, so I'm curious, what future self emerged during the pandemic? Mazpaz, please, take it away. Ah, hello. How are you guys doing tonight? What's up? Thank you for coming. Thank you, Adriel. Thank you for the guests, the presenters. I guess I'll take my mask off. Is that a little bit better? Um, well, uh, I guess for me, um, COVID, COVID hit really hard um, for my family, and, uh, and that really just kind of uh, knocked me on my feet. I wasn't planning for anything big to happen within my family, and, uh, and I lost like a very important family member. And, um, and for me to kind of understand uh, that COVID is real, um, uh, that was uh, that was like a very um, that show, that kicked me in my ass and slapped me in my face and let me know this this thing is real and what is really real and what is really important you know is like um, working all day to have like a nice car and like have some fancy clothes have a nice watch you know maybe an Apple Watch you know what I'm saying 
or maybe uh, working really hard to, to go fly to Maui, you know? That also, that is great. But um, what about the connections with my friends? Am I being cool with my friends and family? Am I being cool with my, my pet cat? Am I giving her the love that she needs? Am I taking care of my plants? Am I conscious of the, my community around me? Am I making sure my mom is happy? Um, so that's all stuff that I really can't do if I'm working really hard or I'm like, I'm not getting my sleep and I'm worried about projects and I'm putting people behind me when I really could put like uh, friends and family like in front of me. So, um, so when uh, COVID hit, I kind of stepped back. I think we all did. And I took a, just a breather. I had just gotten out of an ashram for like an, a month studying yoga. So that really helped me. And, um, and I really just got back to like life, spending time in nature, uh, making sure I'm talking with my friends and family, and um, not trying to work that hard. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Devin, I'm curious, you know, like, like the folks who are in this building, some of them got to walk through this installation, um, this beautiful installation. I'm curious, what emerged over the pandemic that led to this beautiful piece of work? Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so the Grove is made of, at least materially, if all of you got to see it, I hope you all got a chance to check it out. But, um, you know, it's representing uh, four different utility poles that you might really see in uh, urban neighborhoods. I grew up in Philadelphia, um, and I really wanted to represent, uh, materially at least, um, you know, something synthetic that re represents uh, craft traditions that bring communities together uh, in terms of the ways in which people process pain or turmoil or loss. So looking at the spontaneous memorial. So a lot of those materials, um, really for me, applying all of those different materials, I got to spend a lot more time working more intimately with my studio assistant, um, but then also a, a lot of time reflecting. Um, you know, when you're doing small, a small task, applying a rhinestone here and there, you really take time to uh, think about things that really do matter and how, uh, and how much, uh, you know, especially in 2020, a lot of this is paying homage. It's a spontaneous memorial that is paying homage to uh, so many different things that we've lost. Uh, I live in Pittsburgh now, and so it's a place that's suffering a lot from gentrification. And so a lot of black communities, other communities of color are being pushed out, and a lot of that is being erased by big tech moving in, and so I really wanted to have a way to celebrate all of that was lost and pay homage to them. And so, um, you know, I also think a lot about some of these materials also resonate with me in terms of thinking of the queer community and how many uh, specifically trans people of color we lost last year um, and still continue to lose up to this day. Uh, so many of those names don't get the same kind of visibility like George Floyd and Breonna Taylor did, um, rest in peace, but you know, there's also Tony McDade, um, you know, there's Ryan Milton, there's Nina Pop, there's uh, Leila Sanchez, there's Brayla Stone. You know, there's so many people that we, we need to remember and care for. And I just think that, you know, uh, this last year has been, or two years almost now, unfortunately, has been a lot of, about me learning um, how I can sort of reflect upon and care for uh, and integrate people into my community even further and to, to celebrate queer people, to celebrate people of color, um, yeah, and so that's where I'm at right now. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Devin. Please give it up for Devin. <laughs> now, Mumu Fresh, how would you like to show us, how would you like to tell us what emerged over the pandemic, what future self emerged? Um, I'm going to share, I'm going to share a piece with you. It was the first, the first song that I wrote during the pandemic, and it wasn't even like a full song. It was just, um, you'll hear it. <laughs> But I shared it with some of my like producer friends and it was so abnormal. It wasn't the structure that we normally, the top 40 structure that normally we would record in. Um, but it, it really was about like releasing control because uh, before then I had the illusion that I was in control of my life. <laughs> and then, um, you know, when no one was in control, we had no idea what was going on. Um, I'm a big Bruce Lee fan. And one of his favorite quotes is be like water. You know, and that's like water is super powerful. It can drown you. It could sustain you. It could give you life. It could nurture you. It could, you know, it could harm you. Right. And so um, be like water to me is like be what you need to be for the situation given, you know. Um, 
And in that moment, it was like we had to release and let go and, and let God and, and see what was going to happen and not um, for our own sanity, not try to control things that we just didn't have control of anymore. So this piece is called Be Like Water. We I'm going to be like water. I'm going to swim in between the raindrops. I'm going to drift like wood by the riverside. One day when it's all over, I'm, I'm going to be like water. Water, water, water. One day when it's all over, I'm I'm gonna be like water. One day when it's all over, I'm I'm gonna be like water. One. Day when it's all over, I'm gonna be like water. One day when it's all over, I'm gonna be like water. One day when it's all over, I'm gonna be like water. One day when it's all over, I'm gonna be like water. One day when it's all over. I'm gonna be like water one day when it's all over. I'm gonna be like water one day when it's all over. I'm gonna be like water one day when it's all over. I'm gonna be like water I'm gonna be like water I'm gonna be like water Be like water, be like water, be like water, be like water, be like water. amazing like thank you like we can't go we have to like end the round after that like we have no more responding that was amazing all right that was a beautiful how y'all feel about round one 
Nice tester. You got to see everyone's medium. Okay. All right. I think we are ready for round two. I think so. <laughs> if that's the future, I want to be there right now. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Mumu. Thank you, Devin. Thank you. Thank you, Maz Paz. Um, Devin, um, you know, I, I'm, really, I'm really struck by some of the things you were saying about, about remembrance and especially thinking about the events of 2020, which, you know, is, is, is like a step back into the past to think about the future. And so you, you talked about, for example, the violence against black trans folks, um, you know, the violence against so many people of color in, in many different ways. And so I'm curious when, and, and also during a year where monuments were being toppled, right? And we were reckoning with history. So what is it that you are interested in uh, remembering as this monument of the presence for 2020? What, what were some key moments that you're thinking about? Um, thank you. Yeah, so, you know, last year I, I really did, um, like I mentioned, there's so many uh, trans people that have been killed, it continues to happen. Um, you know, we had this big moment where there was uh, a moment of togetherness. People sort of rallied together, we marched together, we protested, and, um, and yet this year there's still already, I mean, been probably around 50 different uh, trans people have been killed, and we still aren't, you know, we're not back to that moment again. Um, we sort of recentered focus back on COVID, which is super important, but we don't want people to get, get kind of like lost in the cracks. Um, and so, you know, I think a lot about how much we need to care for each other as individuals, check in on each other. Um, this last year has been a lot about me, uh, at least for me, uh, checking in with my friends. Um, I've refocused, recentered my focus on uh, family and friendships and what's really important and reaching out to people. Um, collaboration, I think, has been really enriching in different capacities. I mean, me being here with all of you is really exciting. Um, and yeah, I think also what I've done um, in this last year is thought a lot about how different uh, life can be with, um, you know, ways in which we can think about healing practices alternatively. So, um, you know, I got really interested in pseudosciences and learning about different types of religions that have kind of hybridized each other. So people in the past couple years have been really interested in, you know, uh, for example, astrology, I'm a Sagittarius. <laughs> but there's all different other types of um, learning. Thank you, I know it's my time. Um, <laughs> but, but yes, uh, you know, there's, there's other different types of practices um, that are super important to specific cultures that I think we can integrate into our day-to-day -day lives. Um, uh, you know, you talked about, Maz, you talked about uh, meditation and yoga, and I think that that's like another way in which we can be oh, yeah. a little bit uh, selfish in terms of uh, healing ourselves first before we put ourselves out there in the world with each other, so. I feel like nowadays, um, there's so much of a go, 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 cell phone, cell phone. Um, call the person back. Um, don't uh, answer every email you have. Like, who is controlling us? Like, are we controlling ourselves? Or is this device controlling ourselves? Or are our friends controlling us? So, I think we've all gone through this. I definitely have of like, whoa, hold up, I control me. Let me just step back, um, let me breathe. I've learned a lot of breathing techniques lately. Like, I don't know if you guys know about this three-point breath, starting from the belly. I have a belly because of COVID now, y'all, my bad. <laughs> 15 pounds, 15 pounds. Um, starting from the, from the belly, up to the chest, up to the shoulders, and holding it, and letting that go. If you do 10 of those, I bet you you'll have a better day. You know, if you're stressed out, I bet you have a better day. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, thank you. And Mumu, I'm curious, you know, like, so, so we, see, we see with Mazpas, you know, who, who learned how to remix his visuals, you know, this, this, this visual idea of the future. And then from Devin, this, this uh, you know, felt kind of visceral sense of the future. And so I'm curious, from, from a sonic perspective, what, what does the future mean to you? Like, what, how do you envision music deep into the future? Mm, well, I would imagine and, and pray that it's um, more free, that um, in the future, artists are really able to let go of the shackles of, that the music industry has placed on us. Um, we're able to like release marketing terms in, that are in our minds when we're creating. And um, yeah, like, like really kind of separate the creativity from, from the business aspect 
and go back to, you know, creating from a spiritual place, from a, like the way we did when we were kids, before we knew that anyone cared, <laughs> before we knew anyone would pay for it. We just created because it was fun. It made us feel good. Um, my earliest memories of music is just, you know, sitting with my mother and my grandmother cooking dinner. And, you know, I would hit my grandmother might sit at the piano and say, uh, you know, sing something like, I love the Lord, he heard my cry. And then my mom would go, you know, ooh, I love the Lord. And she'd say, move, join in. <laughs> you know, I'm like a little kid. I'm like, I love the Lord, you know. Uh, and, but it's like, it was very communal. It's the way that we um, kind of express love between each other if you imagine like how animals like rub their heads up against each other that would be like equivalent like vocally we're contributing to each other we're having this bonding moment cooking food singing together and creating this really warm space you know long before I ever knew anyone would pay you to do that it was just about connecting with your family connecting with your own spirit connecting with God and uh, so much of that is lost in the music industry on purpose. <laughs> so much of that is lost. And so I would, um, man, I would love to see a future where, where artists are able to get back to our original purpose of using our sound to connect on a molecular level, on a cellular level with other human beings um, for, for healing. I remember seeing my grandmother long before I knew what the term Reiki was. I saw my grandmother, you know, in the church, they would just say laying hands and she would lay her hands over somebody's body and sing over them and move the, the, the pain out of their body. And people would call her, she would get house calls and I would just go with her because I was staying there during the summer to learn, to learn this work, to learn culture and tradition. Because she said, if I stayed in the city, you know, I would never know who I was. So I had to come down to the South and put my hands in the soil and listen to the stories and sit with old people and, and really, you know, understand the truth of, of, who, of who I am because inside of the, the cities, it, they're, they're open air prisons and we don't get to really connect with, with our source. So I, I would imagine, um, and I think it's important to imagine beautiful futures, right? Because all the movies we watch will tell us that the future <laughs> is the end, right? But maybe the future is the beginning and life is a circle, right? So maybe we go back to move forward and, um, I would love to see artists really uh, using their gift in that way to connect with God, to lift us up, to lift each other up, to bring more peace and more joy, more calm um, to each other. Woo, that was beautiful. You know, I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, what, what all of y'all are talking about, especially, you know, in the, in the last round when you're talking about be like water, there's so much in that, not, not only in, in calling out an ancestor in Bruce Lee, you know, uh, but, but also really, really taking that in, recognizing that this nature is our future, it's our present, it's our past, right? Like Maz Paz playing with the elements in his visuals. I'm curious, what does it mean for us to step into a future in a way that continues to preserve our natural environment? I mean, Maz, you, you, you're playing around with these visuals right now, so I'm curious to hear from you. Like, tell us about how the nature flows through your body and into your art. Um, I think that's one thing that, that has helped me just throughout all these crazy times. They say nature is the healer. It's the ultimate healer, you know? So like when I, I, when I feel uh, a little stressed out or there's a lot going on, I don't know about you all, but I like to go to nature and it definitely grounds me. Getting that fresh air, getting outside my house, is everything, leaving my cell phone at home. Um, and I feel like nature is, nature and those who uh, uh, are like connected to nature and understand the, the plants, the animals, the benefits of, uh, roots and herbs, um, those are the people who are part of our future, you know? Those are the people that have been here before, way before all this, that knew how things worked out, and then, you know, things changed. But I feel like it's about going back, back to those people, back to those ultimate elements, because, I mean, I mean, that is the way we're going to survive, you know? I think these cell phones and technology and these great cars and everything, but look, if we don't have fresh water, I mean, when are you going to drink tomorrow? Okay. If you don't have fresh air, okay. when are you gonna, when are you, how are you going to breathe? So, like, 
But I think if we can get back to those healers, those people, those indigenous folks that know how, how the water flows. And why is the water stop flowing over here? Oh, wait, there's like a new, new uh, electrical plant that just got built up on the mountain that just chopped down like this whole part of the river and took up all these trees that used to soak up the water and like let the rain flow. So like um, those are the people who I want to like be around and spend my time around and learn more about and read about. And you might be able to see that in my work. I really like what you said about, um, you know, thinking about going back to these ways of thinking about uh, nature and everything and, and how um, it makes me think about how colonialism really destroyed so much, um, just so much. I mean, just thinking about how many religions uh, were told and how many peoples were told, uh, no, you don't, you're incorrect. Uh, you know, and instead of learning from those cultures and figuring out how can we preserve and move forward together, maybe hybridize our understandings or belief systems or, and, and, and growing as one, we sort of, uh, you know, colonialism just sort of eradicated all of that and, set, and condemned all of those other beliefs in favor of power and selfishness. And I think that, um, you know, as we move forward into the future, it's so important and integral for us to think about uh, how we can learn from each other and share some of these ideas and, and grow together into the future. It's about, um, you, you, can't, you can't colonize or subjugate a people who know who they are, who remember their culture, who, who knows their God. You know, like it, it was necessary for them to take away our God, take away our tongue, take away our traditions. Because then when you, when you don't have those things, what grounds you, what sustains you, you know, what uh, prevents you from, from falling in in, in adopting your colonizer's lifestyle. You know, um, I think a big part of moving forward is decolonizing. And that's like everything across the board, which will be our, our whole way of life that we've learned to adopt. We all have to learn a new way of life and it's gonna be uncomfortable because we're not used to it. But it's like decolonizing our food, our God, our thoughts, our parenting. You know what I mean? Like everything that we do, the way we interact with, with, with one another, We've, we've, never, we've never known of a free way of being. You know, we've never known ourselves outside of colonial thought and colonial rule. So it really is reimagining um, what it's like to, to love each other for real without, without the chains and the bondage. You know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a mom myself. And um, even with raising my son, you know, I have to reimagine what it looks like to really love your children. Because, you know, in black communities, we love really hard because we're afraid that our kids are gonna die young. So you try to really um, beat the idea into them to not do anything and, and you'll, you'll, you'll do it with force because you're so afraid of what will happen if they don't listen. They don't have the, um, the luxury of making a mistake, you know, but it, it makes us love our children in, in a way that's very damaging and that's traumatizing, you know? So as we are like growing to reimagine our future, to me a big part of that is re like learning how to love each other again without the threat, you know, of, 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 of trauma. You know what I mean? I'm never ready for Ooh. that. Oh. What is that? Uh. <laughs> I had to cut you off, sister. It's good. Round two, how are we feeling? Temperature check, snaps, claps, ooze, ahs. You feel good? Oh, yeah. We have the future right in front. Yes. Give a hand clap for the babies in the front. I also want to shout out, we have a, a star in here tonight. Fly Zaya, stand up for everybody. If you walked in through the north, you saw her beautiful face on our poster out front. All right, Adriel. All right. We ready? Final round. Final round. Already. Already. I, did, I didn't expect gracious. it. All right. I mean, I, I kind of want to continue on this flow. I mean, you know, like, I love what you're saying, Mumu, about, about, Time being circular, right? I mean, you know, seven generations back, seven generations forward, all around, we're thinking about the fact that the future isn't just about throwing away the past, right? When we think about times and movements where people did think about the future as throwing away the past, they lose themselves, right? We, we end up in really difficult um, situations that actually take us back instead of taking us forward. And so I'm curious, all three of you, I, I, I sense healing practices that, you, that you've developed and learned not only from your own ancestors, but also from, from the ways we've gotten access to other cultures. What does it mean to incorporate healing practices from our own ancestries, from other ancestries? What does it mean to make it accessible while at the same time honoring 
the fact that all of this is sacred. Devin, I'm curious with you, because you incorporate that into your work. Yeah, um, so, you know, Mumu, you were talking about uh, Reiki a bit and how it related to something that you experienced and saw maybe in a church setting or perhaps like, you know, a familial setting. And, and you know, it, maybe it wasn't referred to the same way, but it is uh, the same idea of using the palms in order to actually channel uh, universal energy and, and move that and heal it through the body. And I think that that, um, you know, that's connected to meditation in some ways. It's connected to spiritual uh, healers, people who use crystals. And, um, you know, I, I think all of these things are maybe the antithesis or sort of the uh, opposite side of what we know to be science, which we associate with fact. But um, I do think that a lot of these practices are kind of also disregarded as something that isn't real or doesn't matter uh, because of their associations with different communities, people, uh, different subjugated communities, people of color, uh, people from other countries and things like that. But we live in a global society and we need to really find ways to integrate some of these practices into our day-to-day -day life because I think so much of, uh, so much healing can come from that, uh, not just because of the actual, it's not magic, but I mean, uh, bringing people together, uh, the power of touch, the power of intimacy is um, is so strong. And even just thinking about the power of the stars and our connection to them and the moon that actually, uh, you know, creates the tides and moves the water in our own bodies. And so I think that there's so much learning to be done um, between communities in a, in a more global sense. Um, and that's, that's something that I've been thinking a lot about over the last couple of years, really, in looking at syncretic religions, uh, religions that kind of bring together two different, uh, two different religions or certain aspects of them together, which a lot of the times is condemned. I mean, it happens a lot in the Caribbean, places where you have a kind of melting pot of communities and, uh, and different types of peoples from all over the world coming together. Uh, those people come together with these different ways of thinking and cultivate new uh, religious beliefs, which I think um, really is something exciting and, and rich, and we can learn so much from each other that way. Yeah, I definitely agree that, um, that a lot of our ancient Earth-based traditions um, are, are valuable, and they should be, you know, um, we should relearn them and practice them again. I think it's important though, again, mindset is so important because if you approach it with a capitalist colonial mindset, you'll exploit it and you will steal the purity from it. You'll steal the spiritual, like you won't connect in the way that you think you'll connect because your heart isn't right, you know? And I think that's always so tricky about spiritual industries when you take something that's so sacred and then, you know, you make a profit out of it. Um, and there's nothing wrong with equal energy exchange, but the spirit just has to be right about it, you know. And I think a lot of time ancient, there are a lot of ancient traditions that were not allowed to be shared with everyone. Now, I don't agree with hoarding, you know, um, culture, especially because we've had so much culture taken from us that I think it is important to relearn the, to, to each one to teach one, but I do think it's also something you got to know the person that you're teaching and what their spirit is because a lot of people will exploit it and um, they dilute the potency of it. And so each one of us has to look into our own hearts when we're coming to God because you, you can't hide. That, that's not a place that, that you can, you know, you can't hide from the omnipotent. You can't hide your intentions. So I think um, as we're moving into the future, and pulling from the past, um, it's just important to, to, to check our, our hearts, check our minds, check our spirits, and, and know that everybody that came from the earth is still connected to the earth. And so many of the things that we seek are already inside of us. You know, if we can tap in, if we can release the things that hold us apart from ourselves, it's really already there. Everything that the ancients you know, learned and knew is because they didn't have all these distractions. They was able to tap in, you know, and, uh, and that's something that we have accessible to us when we're in the right spirit and the right frame of mind, you know. Ooh. Maz Paz, jump in, man. Tap in. Tap in. Let's hear. I'm, I'm curious. How are healing practices affecting your work and your life? 
as I fly the eagle over the sun with a hand honoring the sun. We have little mushrooms growing, growing down below. And they even say that mushrooms are like uh, the interconnectivity of humans and of all, uh, of all life. Um, and I was talking about this the other day, and, um, and I think people were making fun of me, but it's okay. And, um, and, um, but I feel like I, the power of mushrooms and, and other herbs that are coming out these days that used to get frowned upon and looked down are actually becoming huge, like, uh, uh, can make huge changes, I believe, um, uh, with people with PSD, people with severe trauma, these medicines that people used to laugh about and say, oh, this is like a party, whatever, for using, uh, for partying, you know, but actually we're coming to find out that what uh, these herbs are actually ancient herbs that have been used for many years that, as we were saying, like colonizers uh, used to burn witches, quote unquote. And these are the people who knew about these ancient practices. And these are practices, as we spoke about, that are like thousands of years old. You know, like yoga is thousands of years old. And now it's kind of coming cool. People are accepting it. So I... Um, I threw in a little bit of like medicine down there just to talk about like what uh, what kind of medicine are you using? Is it Tylenol or is it is it mezcal or is it um, Benadryl or is it maybe some um, some uh, psilocybin? You know, there's many herbal techniques that you can use. What is a really powerful one? Oregano oil? Psh, don't have some oregano oil because. You will get better the next day, but you will have the worst taste in your mouth. But you want to know why? Because that stuff is really powerful, you know? So I feel like um, the more we start listening to our elders, the more we start listening to our indigenous folk, these people that know this, this, ancient, uh, this ancient power, um, we will be able to, I think, start heading in the right direction. But, you know, these, these, these traditions are being lost every day. Yeah. People are not living. We're not living all um, millions of years. We're not going to live forever. So if we do run across an elder, I think it's about respecting them and making sure you talk with them and really respect them because they're being pushed aside and like, oh, you know, I'm, I don't need to talk to you anymore because you're older. You don't even know how to use the cell phone. And you don't even want to, like, watch TV with me, but you'd rather go walk in the woods. Like, that's the beauty that I like. I like walking in the woods. Can I also share one other thing with you? In, re in regards to the mushrooms too, and, and all of the herbs, it's really important that if we're sourcing, we're making sure that whoever we're sourcing from is respecting the land. You can't just grow, grow, grow every season and not let the land rest. You damage the land and you damage the quality of the herbs. So it's also really important as um, natural practices become trendy, they endanger the planet because it's, it's an overindulgence. You know what I mean? We don't need as much as we think we need. And that's for all of the herbs, for sage, for sweet grass. Like when you, once you start seeing them in these major corporate stores, you have to know that the land is being exploited and the people are being exploited. And it's gonna have to be up to us, right? People as consumers to demand that the corporations treat the land with respect and treat the people on the land with respect and the herbs with respect so that it can be here for the future. Beautiful. Yeah, Maz Paz, I'm seeing, I'm seeing this almost as like this monument of 2021 coming into 2022. And I think this wisdom Mumu Fresh that you're talking about is also, you know, bringing us into the future. I'm, I'm wondering, Devin, to kind of close things off, you know, you, you have this beautiful installation that's a monument for 2020. What, what would be your monument for 2021 into 2022? You know, I think um, that's hard to imagine right now. I made uh, this work after 2020 was over upon, you know, reflecting upon it for some time. But I, I mean, so much has happened even in the last few days. I mean, just thinking about Bell Hooks dying and um, thinking about some of the most significant quotes and, and books and teachings that um, I've received from her that's really influenced me as a professor. Um, in the classroom and thinking about transgressive teaching and, uh, and also uh, 
you know, thinking also about her uh, dis discussing queerness in, in this really nuanced way uh, that doesn't have to do with necessarily who you go to bed with at night. And it's something a little bit different. It's about um, the way in which you situate yourself in society. And, and so, I, you know, that happens. And then just yesterday, J.K. Rowling, somebody who I used to idolize as a child, tweeted something incredibly transphobic. And so, you know, we really have to hold our heroes and people who we hold up on these pedestals to a higher standard because they have a lot of influence and power and we need to move into the future with a lot more sensitivity and care for all people. Um, I feel like that that's something that I think I would really pay a lot of attention to. And then also just holding other people accountable for what we're saying and putting out there. I mean, I have so many friends that are so in debt and we're so looking forward to um, not having to pay back their loans, you know, this promise that was made um, and broken like, so easily and casually. And so I think what we need to do is really uh, hold our leaders accountable and people who we hold up as heroes or put them up on a pedestal, they really are responsible. They have a responsibility to, um, you know, to follow through with what they're saying and, and, and be cautious with how they say things out into the world. So, um, I don't know, I think whatever the monument would be would have to be in response to some of that, for sure. That's beautiful, thank you, thank you, thank you. Everybody please give it up for Maz Paz, Devin Shimayama, and Mumu Fresh. Also, shout out to Andre Watkins for curating this incredible event, and DJ Sean Don. Um, I'm gonna pass it on to DJ Sean Don, but I wanted to end with um, another quote from Bell Hooks. Um, that, that really moved me during this time when I was reflecting yesterday. Um, Bell Hook says, To be truly visionary, we have to root our imagination in our concrete reality while simultaneously imagining possibilities beyond that reality. So I appreciate you all for coming, imagining beyond our realities, honoring our presence and our past. Thank you so much for coming through to the Future Cypher. Test, test, test. Yo, give it up for our panelists today, y'all. Give it a repeat after me. We rocks the party that rocks the party. Every time I do this, y'all always act like y'all don't know what I'm saying. Try it again. Repeat after me. We rocks the party that rocks the party. We rock the party that rocks the party. Rocking the futures that we all dream. Rocking the futures that we all dream. Yo, we rocks the party that rocks the party. We rock the party that rocks the party. Rocking the futures that we all dream. Rocking the future that we all dream. Yo, give it up for DJ Shandon, y'all. Yo, give it up for Maz Paz, y'all. Yo, give it up for Devin Shumayama, y'all. Give it up for Andrew Louise, y'all. Give it up for Mumu Fresh. Yo, as we heading out, Mumu, you mind blessing us with something as we heading out? Okay. Let's do it. Right. Let's do it. All right, let me think about it. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Okay. Act like y'all vibing, y'all. Come on, let's go. Yeah. Snap with me. Let's go. On beat. Don't mess my homie up. There we go. I see you, Zai. Give us something, boss. Welcome to the future. Welcome to the future. Welcome to the future. You can dream of right. Welcome to the future. Welcome to the future. Welcome to the future. Welcome to the future. Welcome to the future.
dedicated to the inside for dying. Every time they meet the disapproving eye, surging the almighty sky for the next supply. What trends, what trends, we're giving the best in high. And if you don't subscribe, you're a trendy guy. That's my plan, and we just head gas. What you think you're better than the rest of the class? No, but I got the heart to have an original thought. I spit sparks that the bubble your pivotal parts. I kick on over the hypertypical jars and I deliver my art like I'm living my art. And I'm for the good opinion, you know you're better, Sean. Oh, welcome to the future. Welcome to the future. Yeah. Oh, hey. Welcome to the future. You can have it any way you like in the future. You can have it any way you like in the future. Thank you. Thank you for coming out. You've been amazing. <laughs> yeah. Give it up. Give it up, y'all. Give it up, y'all. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Make sure that you stay connected with us by following us at Smithsonian AIB for upcoming events. We hope that you enjoy your holidays. Thank you so much for vibing with us tonight, y'all. Give it up for our panelists one more time, y'all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Don't put on my